So now we go on to our last talk from Kristina Petschnik. Um, she's research associate at the Fraunhofer in, uh, uh, Austria Institute in Klagenfurt, Key for Life. Uh, she holds a PhD in technical mathematics uh, from Klagenfurt, and her focus is on 3D LiDAR point cloud processing for urban development and factory planning. So, um, I'll just. The floor is yours. <laughs> thank you. So thank you, Susanna, for the nice introduction. And welcome, everyone, to my talk. I'm happy to be here. And today, we will hear a little bit um, about uh, green spaces in urban planning, or actually the related problem of reducing soil ceilings, which we see quite frequently um, also happening in our cities. So what I want to mention is that this work received funding from the FFG. So this is, these are intermediate results of a running project. We're not yet half time, so there are a lot of results to follow. OK. So I want to start off um, with some statistics, of course. Um, so in 2008, the United Nations found that over um, half of the world's population, in fact, lives in cities. And this number is expected to grow by 2050 um, to nearly 70%. So really, we have a huge urban population. And when we zoom into the European Union, about 20% of the whole area of the Union is occupied by cities. So not also um, cities play a major role where people live, but also in general terms of um, soil use or area use. And within the cities, yeah, we have the problem that high density buildings, no matter whether they are used for offices, commercial areas, or housing, they grow. The number or the amount of sealed areas, it grows at the expense of green and open spaces. So this is unfortunately a topic we face. Um, and when we look at the building sector in general, it is also according to the United Nations, responsible for about 40% of the whole um, energy consumption of nations. So there is really a lot of potential when you think about heating in the winter, cooling in the summer, that you could work with green spaces to have a more moderating effect um, yeah, to achieve energy reduction. Um, and further, a big topic when thinking about soil ceilings or current cities is water management or the, well, the danger of flooding events, especially when heavy rainfalls occur. I mean, I have the feeling at least that they occur more often lately or these years. Um, yeah, of course, open and unsealed spaces are much better for um, taking up water than when you have a fully paved um, street or soil in general. Exactly. So maybe this is something we could just quickly go over. I think we all agree on the point that um, green spaces are very beneficial in many aspects, so beneficial in economic terms, in political terms, but also in social terms. And most important, importantly, they have a temperature regulating effect. So um, they moderate or modulate, sorry, um, the temperature. So when you think of sealed areas in the city, they heat up during the day and then they release the heat in the night. So it really doesn't cool down properly in cities, which has a bad effect on human health. Um, also air filtration, so green spaces, um, grass, bushes, trees, um, they filter pollutants out of the air and they produce oxygen. Um, further, they store carbon, which is, which is also good in their whole biomass, so especially in the root body, but also in the stem. Um, and I already mentioned the water management aspect, so green spaces, they're much better for water runoff compared to sealed areas. Noise reduction, so they're used as noise barriers, for example, along cities um, to deflect the noises or, or the traffic noises. And also they support the biodiversity, so they provide habitats for like small ham mammals like hedgehogs, birds or insects. And then we have more social effects really on humans. So, I mean, they are probably a stress relief. So imagine take a, you take a walk either along an eight lane highway or within a nice green park. I think we all agree which is more relaxing. 
also they're visually pleasing and um, they provide spaces for uh, space for exercise and also for meeting with friends for socializing so it's quite important to have green spaces and now i was already talking a little bit about green spaces being habitats um, and the e european union released a report in 2023 so last year um, stating that over 80 percent of um, eu habitats so these are of course not only urban habitats, but also like coastal, maritime, forest, and so on habitats, that they're in poor condition. And in response to that, they proposed um, the law on nature restoration, um, which also addresses urban habitats. So they, the overall aim is to improve the quality or the status of EU um, habitats. Now the question is, what is an urban habitat or what is urban green? So this could be parks and gardens, we, we all know. So then we have city forests. They're close or similar to parks, but they're usually bigger in size with less human intervention. So they are, they are more nature-based. Then we have urban farms where, for example, facades or rooftops are used to grow certain crops and sell locally. Sometimes they can also be used, for example, to raise chicken. Um, then we have tree canopies. So a tree canopy you can imagine as a big, big tree crown. So in fact, the tree crowns of multiple trees that grow together, they are then a tree canopy. Um, this is also especially addressed in this uh, nature restoration law, these tree canopies. Then we have urban meadows, which are basically um, naturally left um, meadows, so with wild flowers, wild grasses, wild herbs as they come. And we have tree-lined streets and also smaller vegetation like um, hedges. Yeah, and now the question is, um, in order that we can leverage the full potential of these green spaces and plan them properly, you, we of course um, have to be able to describe green spaces and we have to be able to monitor them. And this is where now this AMAZE project where we are working on comes into play. So the main idea is to use remote sensing data that is, for example, collected by airplanes or satellites. I mean, we work more with airplane data or collected by airplanes, but generally to use these remote sensing data and incorporate them in the building submission process. So I drew here a picture of a very simplified um, building submission process. So first of all, someone has to draw a plan on a construction project. And the idea now is, so it's not yet the case in most parts of Austria, to include green spaces in this planning already. Then the building authority at a city, for example, they have to give their permission to that plan before construction can start. And yeah, after construction, this is currently a step that we do not have at all. Um, there should be actually a verification whether those green spaces that were then promised in the um, building permit or during the building submission are really implemented after the construction finishes. And in order to have this verification possibility for green spaces, as I shortly mentioned, we need to have the data on the green spaces on the one hand, and on the other hand, we must be able to describe them in a systematic manner so, we, so that we then can check automatically from the remote sensing data whether implementation was done or not. Um, and in terms of data, we, as I already mentioned, we use airborne data, so data collected by airplanes, orthophotos and laser scan data. Um, then we need a metric to describe green spaces, so there are two and three dimensional metrics. In our case, we assess the volume of green spaces, so we go for the three dimensional approach. And our goal is to measure and describe those green spaces. However, what I will talk today um, is the, or show you today is the related problem of soil ceilings. So in order that we can have more green spaces, we have to reduce the sealed ones because space is limited. Yeah. Um, so the other uh, pillar of the AMAZE project is this systematic description. So um, we use building information modeling. So it's a concept or a set of processes of how to uh, or of interlinked planning and managing um, buildings. 
and also three digital 3D representations of buildings. And it, so far, it's very focused on buildings. So it does not yet um, include information on green spaces. And this is also what some of our partners work on. But we are at the data science conference, so we focus on the data aspect. So I already mentioned um, we use um, airborne data provided by the city of Klagenfurt. So the city of Klagenfurt is a member of the project. And an orth ortho photo is a distortion free and scale accurate photo from a top view. So you could measure in those um, images. So they were corrected, for example, for lens distortion um, and camera tilt, for example. And yeah, we have images. The city of Klagenfurt collects these data every two years from the whole municipality. And they, so we have the data from 2019, 21, and 23. And they usually contain information, um, the RGB values, so color information, but also the near infrared channel that allows you to better detect green spaces. Right. And working together with the Technical University of Vienna, also a partner in that project, um, they came up um, with a classification of soil ceilings. So there are five classes ranging from no soil ceilings, so green spaces, to full soil ceiling. So it's really asphalt, totally sealed, no water can run off. And then we have three intermediate classes, and the intermediate classes are mainly determined um, by how much water can um, run off during the joints between the ceiling or between the stones, for example. Um, so we, so of course, we have data from the whole city of Klagenfurt, but in order to analyze them, we need some labeled data with respect to soil ceilings. And of course, for the whole city, this is a little bit a lot if you need to label that. So we focus on five um, model regions. So one is the um, Strandbad area, then one is a residential area in the south. We have um, an inner city area the Kabeck Klinikum Klagenfurt, and also a commercial area here along the Völkermarkter Straße. And I, just to give you some numbers, oh, do I have to click anything? No? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All saved. Okay. Um, so, um, in terms of area, um, these model regions span over 900,000 square meters. And you can see here, I also gave you the numbers for the different types of soil ceilings. And as we saw in the talks before, also here we have a very imbalanced data set. We have a lot of data of unsealed areas, so with no soil ceiling, and fully sealed areas. But the classes in between are somewhat underrepresented. Um, so then we uh, generate, or we have a data generation pipeline. So we just have the ortho photos so far. So what we do is select the ortho photos um, in the model regions, which are 18 out of the 529 that span the whole um, city area. Then we divide those photos for more efficient processing into tiles of 500 by 500 pixels. Um, and finally, we select then really those tiles that lie within our model regions, so where we have labels from. And the labels, um, you can see here, we get them from the city of Klagenfurt as well. However, they are provided in form of shape files, so we have to um, map these shape files onto the ortho photos first, so that we end up with labeled photos before we are able to split into training validation and test data. Yeah. Then for, we do image segmentation, so we want to um, detect, or maybe we already heard it before quite quickly, image segmentation is the partition of an image into semantically coherent regions, and we want to segment the ceiling types really to be able to measure how much and in what kind of ceiling category we have in the city of Klagenfurt. Also, the idea is that maybe you could have incentives for going from a bad ceiling type, like full soil ceiling, to some of the lighter ceiling variants. And for this image segmentation, so we also tried out more than one network. Now we are stick with DeepLab V3 Plus from Google. Um, so, and first training setup now, I want to, to show you. So, um, we use data only from 2023, 
and we try to distinguish the five different classes I showed you before. And here you can already see um, the no soil ceiling is, or maybe I just give you first um, the metrics that we use for evaluation, that could be clever as well. Um, so we evaluate with respect to the intersection of a union. So this metric basically measures um, how good the overlap between the predicted and the true class is, and the accuracy that basically give you the correctly classified pixels divided by the total number of classified, classified pixels. You can see here we are doing quite well on the no soil ceiling and on the full soil ceiling classes. The in-between ones we managed to separate with mediocre success so far, I would say. If we look at the second training setup, where we then said, OK, um, for the city of Klagenfurt, it would also be interesting maybe not to distinguish the whole five classes, but just to have full, non, and some intermediate kind of ceiling. And then we see here, I mean, we can see here, um, here we go, um, that the intermediate classes, so the segmentation results get better, but still they are not where we want to be, in fact. And that's why we then tried to use more data, so from 19, 21, and 23, and there we see finally um, um, the results start to improve. However, before I bore you with even more uh, training results, I will state the challenges in that problem. So, um, as I already, uh, yeah, I mean, okay, we see here the, I already mentioned the imbalanced class distribution, so it seems a problem in many, many practical applications. However, we face an even bigger problem, and that is labeling noise. So you can see here, for example, the blue thing here is um, some medium um, soil ceiling. However, when you look into the image, that would be somewhere here, um, and there you can actually only see green. And that is because um, the images reflect the top view, so they are photographed down from the airplane. However, the labeling is done on ground level. And of course, you have discrepancies, like when tree crowns, like here, they just occlude the, the true ceiling that lies below. And of course, that introduces labeling noise and biases the model. Um, and then we also have temporal changes, which I will show you in that slide. Um, so we have received labels in 2023. However, of course, if we map it down uh, or back in the past, you have the problem that the area changes due to further construction. Like here, in 2021, we had here parking space area, and in 2019, that was, I don't know, maybe a field, or at least it was not soiled yet. So the labels do not really correlate. And this is our biggest problem currently. So how do we plan to tackle that? So as an outlook, um, so the first and foremost thing we have to do, and we already work together with the, Kla with the city of Klagenfurt on that, um, is that we improve the data labeling. Then after we improve that, I think before that it makes no sense, but we can try out different other neural networks. Then we could also, what we do not do so far, take into account the near-infrared channels. So currently we're working with the RGB information only. And like the colleagues in the first talk proposed, a date, different kinds of data sampling together with data augmentation so that you tackle uh, the inhomogeneous or imbalanced class distribution. And an outlook, we do not only classify um, soil ceilings, we also started on working to find damages to infrastructure like bicycle lanes or um, walkways uh, that was caused by vegetation. So you see it a little bit here, you have root damages done by trees to a parking spot, for example. And with that, I come to a final um, advertisement block. So um, I would thank, like to thank also all our partners in the MACE project. So we're now currently half time, so there are still um, some results to come. And also, I want to say a big thank you to my um, colleague, Alexander Pamla, who uh, cannot hear be, cannot be here today, unfortunately. However, he supports me tremendously in doing the research on that project, and also a thank you to the city of Klagenfurt who provided all the data to show you today. Yeah. 
And with that, I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christina. Very interesting again. Ah, Adriana, I think has the first question. Time for a few questions now and then go on. Adriana Zer, Geoinformation FH Kärnten. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, it's, uh, the part that is of interest to me is less the technical part, but more the conceptual part. Uh, when you talk about sealed soil, are you referring to impervious surfaces? OK. Um, the classification you came up with or you're proposing in your project, how does that many, uh, match the um, proposed imperviousness classes from Copernicus and very recently proposed also by Bundesamt, Umweltbundesamt uh, in Austria? Um, so, of course, we were taking that into account during or, or the T Technical University of Vienna took that into account when coming up with this classification. However, um, you have to see it a little bit uh, standalone from those because we were thinking about, so to be concrete, um, the city of Klagenfurt, they have um, a digital twin. It's available online. You can have a look at it. Probably you know it already. And um, so we were thinking about, as they wanted to measure um, different kinds of, of the soil ceilings, however, the proposed classifications, they're a little bit complex when you try to evaluate them from aerial images, because um, we have a, a, a ground resolution of between two to five centimeters, so it's, you really have to come up with a less fine um, uh, classification, because otherwise you will have not really a chance to, to discover it from the orthophotos, from the aerial images. May I just uh, add, yeah, thank you. Um, I think it will be, as a follow-up, interesting to see how your classification in the end matches the ones that will probably become a part of Inspire um, uh, su suggested classification that is um, then a standard for the European uh, area. Yep. OK, one more, two more questions. Okay. Hello. Um, I can imagine that radar data would help with the classification. Is it um, available? Sorry, what did you say? Radar data? Radar data. Mm -hmm. Is it available, available for this resolution? And did you consider using it? Um, yeah, so I mean, if we, if we look at Sentinel, for example, Sentinel-1, it's satellite data, they provide, uh, they, sorry, they, pro it's, uh, they provide um, radar data. However, they have a re resolution of one pixel representing 10 by 10 meters. So this is a resolution we cannot work with here. However, with the airborne uh, data collection the city of Klagenfurt does, we only have RGB data, we have near-infrared data, which we want to also include in our studies and now this year for the first ti time we have ALS so laser scan data 3d data um, which provides us um, a better opportunity to distinguish like soil bound green and like facade greenings and roof greenings but yeah radar would be interesting but currently we don't have the data okay so I think one last question Online question Great insights. Thank you. Are there strategies to roll out this project to the whole city of Klagenfurt? Uh, yes, that is actually the main idea. So we are now testing with these five model regions. However, we will expand. Just currently, we're unfortunately a little bit restrained because the data labeling, of course, it's a tedious and also very manual process. So probably for the scope of this project, we will stick to some model regions. But in fact, the idea is that the city of Klagenfurt will incorporate a similar strategy in their digital twin that's already available now online to everyone, for everyone to look at. So thank you, Christina. Fun fact besides, uh, we, <laughs> we <laughs> found out yesterday that uh, you're using data from our camera. From yes. <laughs> <laughs> so no, um, thank you again for your interesting talk. Uh, if you're interested, um, she also holds a workshop in the afternoon, and I think there's still Yes, some there are still spots. some spots free, because yesterday we discovered we, we got a bigger lab, so 
we, even though we are officially full, we still have some places. Okay, okay. thank, thank you. you.